Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to be talking about marine fuel industry here, mainly because it's the two products that we're kind of introducing that are starting in this application that are good for marine diesel. Now, over time, we'll be looking for more land-based projects, but for right now, we're going to start with sticking to just marine diesel for this application. To start with the RF9, the RF9 is the auto filter for automatic back flush filter like an RF3. That's why it's part of the autofill series. Now, where does it apply? There's actually two different main things here. That there's one that's marine, where you see the marine boat on top, which is a smaller vessel, and then you see the marine heavy diesel engine. Now, that's more for your heavier Freightliner rigs, your big tugboats and fire trucks, stuff like that. Big boats are working boats, I should say. And then the critical application, there's a rail line, is, is kind of my point of my reference. Aaron will get more in detail about what his reference is. But my, my reference off this is just more of a rail application, which is where we're going to be pushing next after the marine indication. So what is the RF9? It's, as you can see, it kind of has a little bit the same form of an RF3. You have different sizes for different applications and different flows, of course. Starting with the DN40, DN50, DN65, DN80. A lot of the things that we're going to actually go through as far as a breakdown of the whole filter will be the DN80. Now, the product characteristics of the RF9 is very similar to the RF3, other than it's for a fuel application and oil as well, and oil sludge. Now, it's externally driven back flush process, adjustable back flush intensity, no fluid contamination with external flushing, and gas in this case. Now, that sounds a whole lot like an RF3, right? Intensive back flush impulse. Pressure loss, free back flush, low consumption of compressed air, large filter area in a compact design, just like the RF3 and RF10, maintenance and service friendly design, like all of our products we try to keep with, and then trace heating system for high viscosity fluids. So if you're pulling into an application that seems to be more heavy duty that needs a heating system prior to going to, it's actually built in. Now, it can't go too high. You can't put in sub-zero temperatures and expect it to be able to be filtered through the viscosities, but it's it's enough to keep it warm. And then again, intelligent control system that's designed on all our auto filtration systems. Now, the anatomy of the RF9 for the auto filter, uh, you have the filter chamber, which would be your central area. And as you can see, there's kind of rivets around, and there's little circles on the top. It shows you how many elements are in. In this case, the DN80 has six elements, including one central element in the middle that's about 1,500 micron. And you can see that in the next couple of pictures. It has a differential pressure monitoring system that uh, is very similar to all other hydraulic entities in the Heidek and Schroeder world. As your outlet, your inlet, your drain for draining the whole housing. And then, of course, you have your back flush line. In this case, it says flushing oil outlet. And then, just like the RF3 and other automatic filters, you have the gear motor positioning on top. You have your electrical junction box. You have your filter heaters, if that option is necessary. Your gas reservoir, which is supply, which is really gas meaning air, and air supply with control valves is underneath that. So that just helps you move the positioning arms a lot faster and around. Let's cut it in half. Let's look inside. The operation of the whole performance. So in the very center, you'll see the back flushing media filtrate. That's your 15 micron. But underneath that, you see a piston in default position. That's considered like your home position for an RF3. Now that position, once it's down there, is a clean cycle or starting of a clean cycle. And then on the very top, you see a flushing device in filtration position where that arm is just like a gear motor, the drive shaft. It's going to stay in that one position. And the sludge valve across on the very bottom. So when it's in motion to back flush, you'll see the piston in the working position where it's slowly moving up and it gradually goes up through each filter as it's back flush and then returns back down to go to the next element. The flushing device is now in a flushing position where you can see the arm going to that single element. Flushing gas is the air press is being pushed on the bottom to help lift that piston up. You have your gas valve that's open on the back which gives it the air line to fill up that piston on the bottom. And then of course the sludge line now is open. Now you can see the sludge how it's being back flushed on the single element here. Now, this will actually is the back flush process where you're actually pushing the fluid out of the element. You see the piston in the upper position. Now, this is now it's back flush through one full element. In return, the stuff on the other elements, you're getting the clean fuel to actually fill up on the underneath that piston. So it's a constant rotation of constant filtration when the other elements aren't working. Flushing gas, as you can see, is filled up on the bottom. Your gas valve is open still, and your sludge valve open is still running as you finish the back flushing process. Now, as the one to two seconds really is what, how long it takes for that piston to fall back down, the chamber is now completely filled with clean fuel. Your flushing gas is now decompressed where it sounds like a nice hiss of a regular air actuator almost. And then your sludge valve is closed as it gets ready to move to the next element. 
Just like all of our products, we have a very sophisticated element production. We have a conical shape and a cylindrical. The cylindrical is mainly because it's a super mesh. You can't really get in a small design for a super mesh, so we went ahead and went with a cylindrical for it. Filtration is according to ISO 44406 code. That is just to stay in transit with the rest of our fuel and hydraulic components. And then again, all of our filters are multi-pass filter elements, and they're also absolute rated for value with efficiency. One thing that differs us from the competition here is this mechanism that clips on the top of the elements. This is for uh, no risk of loose filter elements, so they're in there nice and tight. No specific insulation for the torque. Uh, we try to limit the amount of torque specs that are needed for this. And then again, easy and fast maintenance. This element pops up, slide it out, put it on the new cap, on the new element, slide it back in, you're ready to roll. So this is where the flushing quote unquote arm is now positioned under the element that's being back flushed. That silver element right there, that's actually what's spun around with the drive shaft, which is actually the whole pressure chamber in the center. And the bottom, it's actually getting ready to change that element. So here's what it looks like underneath it. See how the element on the bottom is basically giving the flushing chamber an opening for it to be back flushed. Now that silver piece in the middle, the two little holes there, that's actually a pipe. So if you were to look at this cut away, it would actually be an empty circle there, and that's where the flush line would come down. So how does it change? This is just a quick, simple picture. This is a changing from one element to another, clockwise positioning. And again, while each one is filtering, if you can look around the back flush arm, there's an open surface area. Now that is to continue to filter while each element is being back flushed. And then again, to make this unit accessible for any application, if they're dropping in post-production of a line or to add it and need to move it or anything like that, that back flush arm can be twisted along with the whole housing. So just to fit your needs so you don't have to do more pipe work or anything, it's a drop-in plug-and-play application. The RF9, in summary, it's new innovative back flush process, being able to filter and back flush at the same time. It's efficient hydraulic accumulator back flushing, very high cleaning efficiency, no risk for compressed air into the oil, no contact between gas and fluid at all times. Very small sludge volume, no need to have an over-dimension pump, cost and energy saving is huge, and it's very important on the footprint of a marine vessel. Adjustable back flush intensity, it does uh, get pretty loud, it can be very quiet too. Enables very fine filtration down to five micron, but one thing I like to bring up is the reason why Aaron and I are doing this combined presentation is because this is almost complementing Aaron's product that he'll be introducing here shortly. Now, what I mean by that is this could be your first stage filtration coming from your bulk source tank that you have in your boat or that's coming into your boat. You can make it be the before it actually goes in your tank, it comes in there. And then, of course, you'd have Aaron's, uh, what he was about to produce further down the line. So it doesn't have to be 5 micron, but it can get down to 5 micron. You can do 25, 50 is the typical application that we see, but that's just what we can basically accomplish. Fine filtration, additional power boost from external media is a must. That's where you get the kind of the surge of the spray. For a sludge treatment unit, you get a large filtration area with high dirt capacity. This can hold a lot of dirt while still filtering. Same filtration degree as a full flow filter, independent off system pressure, buildup of a filter cake improves separation efficiency, clean oil without air bubbles back to the lube oil tank, which is a huge must for that for sludge treatment, and cleanable or disposable elements. Control box for these units has a transmitter analog signal to external system as a standard and for a large display is also necessary for this unit. You can hook it up to a PLC. But anyways, a compact design, again, the footprint that this takes is very small, making it able to fit into a small application. And finally, it is fully automatic. All right, so to get things started, uh, much like Ryan had said, these products that I'll be introducing today, so as you can see on the screen there, heavy duty diesel pre-care duplex. So the HDP, but in a duplex arrangement. This product really complements what Ryan was talking about. This is generally seen, if not downstream of a product like an RF9, it is also seen on some smaller vessels where a larger filtration, like Ryan had described, is not necessary or is restricted because of the footprint in the engine room. So to help break down the acronym, to help us better understand it, we're talking about the HDPD. So a lot of letters were thrown at you. Heavy duty. So again, if you're familiar with our HDP product, it is a very solid, robust design. You'll see how the newer version of the HDPD really supports that statement. 
D for diesel fuel, designed for diesel fuel, distillate petroleum, and along with that, the biodiesel blends that are becoming more and more common, maybe not necessarily in the marine industry, but again, when we talk about, say, stationary or critical fuel applications, that is becoming more and more common. Pre-care, so a good reminder that we're talking about the primary fuel filter here, not the cartridges typically found on the engine. That's an OEM related, engine OEM related product. And finally, the newest term that we've added here is the duplex. So this product incorporates a changeover or duplex valve configuration. So to give you kind of a reminder of where we're applying this product, as you can see, the highlighted red area is what we're talking about. So between the fuel tank reservoir itself and what's shown there is the charge pump, many times described as the lift pump. So it's on the suction side where, again, we're not discussing the main filter on the pressure side. So this gives you an idea of where we would place the HDPE. But here's a better idea as far as applications. So much like Ryan had discussed, marine is really the key industry for this product. We'll kind of lay out the three different options we'll discuss today, targeted towards different marine vessel sizes and different regulations, but really we're trying to, to broaden our product offering in that market. This product can still also be used for critical power generation locations or applications. One thing that's really important to note is many times we might think that marine is just for propulsion. On board those marine vessels, they will often have power generation units for desalinization, or for other power generation just for the electrical systems in the vessel. So keep in mind that uh, we don't necessarily have to look at just the propulsion systems but also some of the generator systems found in the marine industry as well as the land-based. The critical applications on the bottom left to keep us thinking outside the box we see where duplexing is often a feature of interest. So in this case you can see one of the railway maintenance of way pieces of equipment. So this is going through maintaining tracks Rail is just one market example, but we can get into typically like cargo shipping docks where many times we'll see the container lifts and moving equipment that needs to maintain uptime throughout the entire shift. And duplexing can allow that sort of configuration and that functionality. So like I mentioned, we're talking about three specific models today. The one in the center is one that I'm sure we're somewhat familiar with. We recognize the housings, the manual drain version in an aluminum casting. The model code designator you see is that BC1. That's found within the, the full model code that kind of helps you narrow down what we're talking about. On the right hand side, you also may recognize the auto drain version. So it's an all aluminum construction as well with the HT1 designator in its model code. On the left hand side, that new red housing that you may not be familiar with yet is our manual drain version, but in a cast metal housing under the designation of UC1. So instead of seeing a BC1 or an HT1, you would see a UC1 in that model code area. So starting with the basic manual drain version in the aluminum housing, it's the same HDP model that you're familiar with. So we can do 340, we can do the 600 size, we can do double and triple housing. So really covering a flow rate from the 90 all the way up to a 476 gallon per hour flow rate. The single lever ball valve operation certainly makes for ease of use. You just have one lever and two positions, makes it very simple to use. The idea is to make sure that it is a serviceable filter without downtime or without interruption for the diesel engine. So you can switch to one housing, service the filter on the other that is out of service, or in the case of a manual drain, and you're developing water in that sump, you can actually drain that off while the system's in operation on the other housing and then switch back. So some additional functionality there. Again, just to reiterate, this is not only compatible with diesel fuel, but biodiesel blends from zero to 100% blends. And we're talking about the same options that you're all familiar with for the HDP are also available on this product. So the same WIF sensor, water in fuel sensor. We're talking about the same flow through fuel preheaters and the same primer pumps, keep in mind that those primer pumps are available for the 600 manual drain version only. So we can also look at using this configuration 
with the high-tech version, so the auto drain. So now not only can we change elements without interruption, but we can drain water simultaneously without interruption. Keep in mind the HT version has only the 600 size available, so from 160 to 476 gallon per hour flow capable. So we can still do single, double, and triple housing configurations to get those high flow rates, but we just go down to the 600 liter per hour housing not down to the 340 like the BC version. Again, same diesel fuels that it's compatible with and the same HDP options that you can get for the HT are available with the duplex version. Now, for the new addition to this product grouping, we're looking at the manual drain version, but it is made of a steel or cast iron configuration, which we targeted specifically towards the marine and offshore applications. So designed to SOLAS guidelines, it's an industry organization that provides some directives as to some of the safety features, the design configurations that are needed for fuel pre-filter. Along with that, we have the ATEX certification. You can see the information there, which shows which specific applications this filter vessel is compliant with. The flow is shown here as 476 gallon per hour flow capable. Now that's for the entire housing in a dual flow situation. So that valve, instead of the first two housings, now has three or four positions rather, which would allow us to select one housing, either left or right. We can flow through both or we can provide a complete shutoff. So, just to give you an idea, 238 gallon per hour flow rate is what we're typically seeing per side. And we'll get into that here in a second. The cast metal construction is important just because in some vessels when we get over a certain hull length, we're required to stay away from aluminum and plastic materials just because of the fire safety and the melting point of the material. So in this case, in order to comply with those SOLAS guidelines in larger vessels, this housing is produced with a material with a melting point higher than 1700 degrees Fahrenheit, so well within the guidelines. Keep in mind though that that does add some significant weight to the design itself. If you're used to seeing our HDP product, the aluminum castings, these are much heavier at a 99 pound weigh-in for the unit you see in front of you. So the HDPD single housing flow operation is like you see there. So the valve is either placed in the left or right hand position to select either the left or the right hand housing. The opposing housing can be serviced, drained, and handled while the other unit is in operation. Now keep in mind this restricts the flow down to 238 gallon per hour flow. If we look at the next situation, we'd look at dual housing flow. So if we put the handle in the position to allow for flow to travel through to both housings, it allows the entire solution to provide 476 gallon per hour flow rate. So this comes in handy in situations where extended full load operations are needed or in situations where you can reduce the power plant's load down to about 50% you can then switch over to one housing, service the other, and then switch over to the other, complete a full service on both housings, and then return it to the full flow to allow for full operation of those engine systems again. So with that, uh, I think we'll conclude today's meeting with a lovely uh, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thanks, right. everyone. Have a good weekend. Whether it's a helpful how-to or a new product release, Schroeder Industries is your place for fluid filtration. Subscribe below.